and welcome again to Wingman Nation, everybody, and to my virtual campfire. I am the Wingman, and today we're going to have a conversation about something I think that we are all, all of us, pretty good at, and that's complaining. Doesn't it seem like we're all pretty dang good at it? I'll give you an example. When it comes to RVs, people love to complain about the quality of new RVs, how cheaply built they are, how crappy they are. But then imagine this, if the manufacturers actually improve their quality, they'll surely have to raise their prices, right? And guess what? Then people will complain about that. Now, I'll be the first person to tell you that I believe many of the components that go into new RVs are made, made to last. Well, just long enough for the folks who make them to last, but not long enough for the folks who buy their RVs, right? So at the end of today's video, I'd like to get your takeaways. I'll be sure and give you mine. For now, though, let's join my friend Ron Burge, an RV lemon lawyer who has made a living by listening to endless customer complaints for decades and by suing lots of RV manufacturers. So through the years, you and I have spoken awful lot about lemon RVs and the quality issues that manufacturers have. Where are we in 2024? What are you seeing from consumers, Ron? You know, uh, are they having more problems, less problems? And if they are having what problems, what are the biggest ones they're having? Quality level is still down. It's still not up to where it used to be back in 04, 05, 06, right in through there. That was probably the high point in quality when it comes to RV construction. It's gone down pretty continually ever since then, and it, it's still down. Uh, the, the biggest problems we see, a lot of the common problems are water leaks, and that usually is related to the slide quite often, although we've seen more roof water leaks than we've ever seen before, too. So you're seeing that these on newer RVs or on older RVs? No, these are on newer Water issues. Oh, yeah, these are on new ones. And quite often it is related to the slide-out seals not really working right or else the box for the slide out being cut in such a way that it's bigger than the slide seals are going to accommodate and you end up with leaks happening there. Although the roof leaks, like I say, I'm seeing more of those than we used to see in a long time. Are the problems that you're seeing, do you think they're a consequence of poor engineering or they haven't put them the pieces together properly or what's your, I know you're, you're a lawyer, you're not an engineer, but what do you, what do you think? What's your gut tell you? Well, my dad was one, so I can get there to, to a degree anyway. But my, from everything I've seen, my gut is telling me that you can engineer and design something as good as you want, but if the line isn't doing it the way that works, even if they're following the engineering specs, it really doesn't matter. You're still going to have problems. So I don't know that the engineering and design aspect is so much of a problem, although we do see those problems, like the, the crack issues going on with uh, frames right now. But at the same time, if the front line, which is building the RV itself, if they're not really doing things right, you're going to have problems no matter how good it may be designed. But you're saying it's, it's not necessarily the design, but at the same time, is it a quality of parts, you know, bad parts that they're putting in? or? I think, it, I think it's a combination of two things, cheap parts. And the whole industry has gotten cheap in its construction uh, techniques as well as the quality of the materials they're using in it. But I think it is two things. And one of them is the cheapness in the parts and materials that are being used. And the other is just simply the bad labor in putting them together in the first place. Help me understand how does someone end up contacting Birch Law Firm about their lemon problem? Where, where do these problems begin for a consumer before they even get to you? Because you are the, I see that you are the opposite of an ambulance chaser, you know, that you hear about. <laughs> they they got to chase down, they got to chase down the ambulance kind of. I mean, how do things begin and at the genesis and then get to the Birch Law for, Firm for you to take over the case? And quite often what we see is people go through a series of attempts to get repairs done right and it just keeps failing. Or sometimes it'll go in for a repair and it'll come back with that fixed, but then something else has happened as a result of what they did to fix that. So it's kind of like the never ending problem finally gets to the point where you have the straw that broke the camel's back and then they decide that that's enough. And then they try to figure out, well, what am I going to do? And there's only so many options. And with what the cost is for an RV and the investment you make, it's kind of like the only way to get out of that is to get a lawyer because the factory 
they t they really don't help you that much as an owner. Uh, they'll instead insist that we can get it fixed. And the problem, of course, is you're running up against that warranty clock, and they can repair it forever. But when you get to the end of that warranty, you may be high and dry and on your own. But is that a problem between the consumer, me, the RV owner, and the manufacturer, or me and the dealer? Because the dealer is my connection to that manufacturer. And if the dealer doesn't take care of me, is that the manufacturer's fault? Actually, it, it, the way they worded their contracts, they say it isn't really their fault. But then again, take a look at the system they've set up. The system they've set up tells you to go to the dealer. And yet, they try to act like the dealer isn't really their agent for purposes of doing warranty repair, when in fact, they're the ones who pay the dealer to do that work. But what you have to do as an owner of an RV, wherever you take it into the dealer, you need to be complaining directly to the factory every single time so that the factory can't sit back and say, gosh, we didn't know that was going on, which is exactly what they'll say when push comes to shove, if they haven't been kept abreast by you as an owner. Is it because they're trying to get rid of the responsibility and just blame it back on the dealer? And the dealer's going to say, well, we were backed up and, and me, the consumer, is caught in, you know, I call it RV purgatory. So what I'm hearing you say is anytime I take my RV in for service work, warranty work especially, copy the manufacturer on that, even if it's just an excuse and, and a, a delay of game, if you will, on the part of the dealer. I think this is this is one of those Murphy's Law kind of things, you know. If you have a problem and you make an appointment to take the RV in, you should also call the factory and send them an email or a written letter through the mail, one or the other, but you need to put it in writing and you need to put it orally to the factory and tell them, hey, I got this problem or this series of problems and I've got an appointment. I just want you guys to know that I'm taking it in to have it fixed under warranty. You do that every single time. And the odds are they're going to get it taken care of. They're going to get it taken care of primarily because they're tired of you calling. They're tired of seeing your letters and your emails. And so the factory will actually get involved. Otherwise, what happens is you go to the dealer, and then the dealer may send in an order for a part. But you know what? He may not. He may get too busy working on other stuff and forget to place the order on yours. So the only way you can be sure that parts have been ordered is if you call the factory and ask, hey, it's been in the shop for two weeks and they tell me they're waiting on parts. What's going on? You kind of have to do part of this work yourself to get taken care of, unlike many other kinds of consumer products. In the RV industry, you got to fight for yourself as well as have the dealer fighting for you. It just seems to me to to be awkward in terms of, of you say contact the let the manufacturer know, but you have to go through the dealer, and the you want the dealer to do their job. But what if the dealer doesn't, like you said, hasn't ordered the right part? You don't want to get in the way of the dealer by going to the manufacturer. It just seems like a cluster instead of being very, very clear, the dealer orders the part, if the dealer doesn't get it in, the dealer's gonna be responsible for that communication with the manufacturer. You're telling me that that's not so. I need to be in the middle of this thing, yes? Yeah, well, what I'm saying is that if you wanna let them tinker around forever and just hope that it gets fixed, then fine, don't bother calling the factory. If you wanna get it fixed as fast as you can and be sure that it's fixed right, then call the factory and make sure they know what's going on. Because as sure as things go wrong, and then you call the factory, the factory is going to say, well, gosh, they didn't order those parts, or gee, they should have called us. We would have been glad to tell them how to fix that. And then all of a sudden, you get into a fight between whether the dealer is doing the job right and the factory knows about it, when all you really want is just get it fixed and get it back to me. So when you get involved as a lemon lawyer, I should have already jumped through some hoops, tried to get the RV fixed and, and, and created a journal so I can hand that over so you can see a, a one pager of the history of my situation. It, yes? That would be the ideal thing, but the ideal thing doesn't always happen, of course, because people tend to trust that the dealer is going to get things done and take care of them, and, and too often that doesn't really work out. So it goes back to that Murphy's Law thing. As sure as you make that journal and you keep that record, I call it sort of a defect complaint diary that you're writing for yourself. And hopefully things will get taken care of. But as sure as you don't do that diary, as sure as you don't make the complaints and such, 
you can bet things are going to go wrong. And if they do, you're stuck. You don't have any notes of what you did and when you did it. You don't know when the factory actually heard about it. You don't know if the right parts were ordered or the wrong parts were delivered or what. So you have to be sort of proactive in getting things accomplished and helping the dealer. And, and I think probably the best way to look at it is you're helping the dealer do its job. You know, the dealer gets ignored by the factory just like you do at times. So help the dealer do his job by making sure the factory knows the dealer needs his, their help up there too. As mentioned at the top of today's video, I'd like to get your takeaways. Do you agree with me that pretty much no matter what the manufacturers do now, people are going to complain about them, even if they improve the quality of their products? And how about what Ron Bird suggested about the importance of keeping your manufacturer in the loop about any repair items and trips back to the shop for warranty work that you may need to have done? It's my guess that most RVers do not contact their manufacturer, and I certainly understand I do. In a in a perfect world, if you will, we wouldn't need to notify the manufacturer, but guess what? It is not a perfect world. Again, let me know your thoughts on today's video, and if you would, give it a thumbs up. And finally, if you think you might have a Lemon RV, you can get a free evaluation online. Yes, you can. It's easy to do. Just go to rvlemonlaw.com. Put it all together, rvlemonlaw.com and an actual RV Lemon lawyer will review your situation and let you know if it sounds like you might have a case. Again, rvlemonlaw.com. All right, that'll do it for today. Thanks for joining me, and thanks to Ron Burge for taking the time to, well, help us learn how to best protect ourselves if we have a Lemon RV. I'm the Wingman, and I'll see you next time right here on Wingman Nation.